Okay, so I'm going to talk about an extra equivalent payments question. Equivalent payments are really awesome because they blend everything that we've done in this particular chapter together in one question and really focuses our attention on the timeline, which is extremely important. In finance, we are always dealing with cash flows across a period of time. Time is important to us. Uh, cash or money received at one point moment in time is worth more or less to us than even the same amount of cash received at a different moment in time. So this kind of question looms large when we get to the final exam, if you're worried about these things, uh, when we get into uh, compound interest and we start dealing with equivalent payments in that particular topic area. So let's look at an example here. We have Chelsea borrowed $7,500 on September the 15th and agreed to repay the loan by three equal payments the following November 10th, December 30th, and February 28th. Calculate the payment size if the interest rate on the loan is 11 and a three quarters percent. One big thing to note here is that uh, the payments are all equal. So each payment is equal. Uh, so our journey always starts with drawing out our timeline. There's just no way to do it other than that. Okay, so September 15th, that's when we received the $7,500. And then on three subsequent days, uh, November the 10th, we make a payment. I'm going to put that as an X because I don't know what it is. And sort of keep it on a little bit of a different line than the $7,500 receipt. November 10th, we make a payment. December 30th, we make a payment. And February 28th, clearly of the following year, we make a payment. Now, this is an awesome question on another level, is it gets us to focus and, and play around with the days between dates calculation on our calculator, because I need to know how many days are between November 10th and September 15th, December 30th and September 15th, and February 28th and September 15th. I am going to make September 15th my focal date. That's just the easiest one, especially when we have three unknowns here. Uh, referring to just today, or the current period as the focal date, just makes uh, the organization a little simpler. In theory, any focal date will work. Okay, You could have picked any date uh, across the whole time spectrum as a focal date, and as long as you treated all the cash flows equally as of that focal date, you're fine. But the current date is the easiest one in this particular case. So I'm going to look at that X as of today, uh, the second payment as of today, and the third payment as of today. Add those up, and they should be equivalent or equal to the $7,500 borrowed. Okay. So my first step here is I need to know my days between dates. And if you haven't looked at the, uh, there's a little short uh, little clip uh, available. It shows how to do find those on your calculator. Uh, but I need to know the days between dates from September the 15th uh, to November the 10th from September 15th to December the 30th, and from September 15th again to February the 28th. Okay. So I'll do the, I'll do the first one, and then uh, we can talk about, uh, and then you can, if, you, if it's really uh, fuzzy for you, just look at the clip and, and slow it down. So just pulling out my calculator here, and I'm going to start off uh, at Apps, go to Finance, and then scroll down to DBD, Days Between Dates. There we go, I got that. And I enter in the first date. The first date is September the 15th, so that's like 09.15, and I'll assume it's just the current year, 21. Put a comma, and then the second date, which is November the 10th, which is November is the 11th month, 0 0.10, and again, 21. And close the bracket push enter and I get that that's 56 days okay so when I start to do my equivalent payments I have my 7500 is equal to the X right because I don't know what how that payment is and now because I'm going back I'm using the present value formula so 1 plus R which is 0.1175 T which we determined to be 56 days out of 365, okay? And then the little exponent is minus one. That's very important because we're finding present values. Okay, yeah, really, really, really easy to miss that minus one. 
And now I go and I, I do it for the next payment. Plus X, 1 plus 0.1175 again. And when I go using my days between dates, between December 30th and September 15th, I get 106 days. And you're going to want to verify that because that's really useful practice. Okay. And then minus 1. And then the last payment, X, 1 plus 0.1175. And then February 28th. Now, remember, February 28th would be of the following year. So when you're entering that in, remember, February 28th would be occurring in 2022. If you leave it as 2021, you're going to get some weird results. You'll get a number. It just won't be the right number. Uh, but it'll be very close to the right number, which makes it close enough to be dangerous. Okay, and then don't forget the minus one. It was 166 days. Okay, so inside the brackets, I do that calculation. Uh, the X is still an X. It's okay. And so I have the 7,500. Remember, X is just a representation for a number. And when I do the calculation of the inside the brackets, not forgetting the exponent, I get, first of all, 0.982292X. So I don't know what that X is just yet. Okay, plus 0.967003x, don't forget that x, plus 0.949272x. A couple of checks here because we're doing present values. Each one of those coefficients should be less than 1, and they should be getting smaller as we get further out on the timeline. They seem to do that right there. So we're all kind of happy right now. So $7,500 equals to, and then I, I gather up all my like X's. doesn't matter if they're decimals or not. 2.289.8567 X. And then I isolate the X and I get $2,587.49. The very end, I rounded. Up until the very end, I kept it as six, six decimal spots, just sort of following uh, the typical conventions that one would get on an online assignment. Uh, but it's, it's good to keep a few decimal spots there just so you're not over-rounding. All righty. And that's it. That sums up a nice little meaty equivalent payments problem. If you have any questions, always feel free to ask.